Hey guys, welcome back to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also changes the studio for the first time since, well, we moved here. So I guess it's been like 20 some odd episodes. It's been a long, long time. So uh, new background here, actually adding acoustic foam to the studio because you guessed it, the podcast is getting ready to ramp up. We're actually getting prepped for this week to record the first episode. So the return of Airsoftology podcast into the mix. So stay tuned on that. I uh, don't know the release date. We got to kind of get through it, hopefully work out all the kinks. And it's been a long time since we've done a podcast. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. It turns out all right. Also want to give you guys an update of what's going on here shortly. In about 20 days, May 22nd, I'm going to be at Bad Karma Noob Day. So if you guys haven't uh, heard about it, don't know about it, or have you know are in the area of Nashville, Tennessee, definitely check out badkarmaairsoft.net. That's the actual website for the nonprofit field. And we're going to be having Noob Day, we're expecting between 1,100 and 1,500 players in pretty much every major retailer is going to be there. So guys, I'm going to be there. I'll be set up in a booth right when you come in the gate. So uh, come find me. I'll be there all day. I'm going to try to get out and play a little bit too. So uh, come check it out. But yeah, that's going to be incredibly huge. Do not miss out if you're anywhere near Nashville, Tennessee. But yeah, that's all I have for updates this week because I really hit you guys heavy last week. So let's just jump right on in to your questions. Alpha Cody writes, hey John, my field is having a night op. What's your opinion on night ops? Should I go? If yes, how should I prepare or any tips in playing night ops? Thanks. Yeah, so I've played quite a few night ops, both uh, locally at my local field, uh, just some pickup game kind of night games. I played some scenario type games, so like mini events uh, that rolled into the nighttime. And then of course I played a lot of milsim events in night. And I'll tell you, they're all similar in the fact that you're going to probably get friendly fired a lot more than you would normally if it's daytime, especially if you're playing with a lot of people at like a local field that don't have night vision or aren't playing as really cohesive teams. Like you're really sticking together to make sure you don't get friendly fired. Um, that's going to be the number one thing you're gonna deal with is so be prepared to get shot. Um, if you're playing with a good team, like your group is together, make sure you positively identify your target or PID as I've heard people call it and the guys in the, I think in the military call it that too. So get a PID on your target before you open fire because when it's dark out, it's really tough. The other thing I'd say recommend is you get a flashlight, but be mindful of light discipline. Some of the important things when you're playing is if you're here and somebody's behind you and they're shining a flashlight on you, they silhouette you. So you are this huge dark silhouette in uh, like with light shining around it. So you are just ripe for the pickings. Also, if somebody's shining a light at you, chances are they're probably a bad guy. Uh, you're gonna have a really tough time PIDing them, but sometimes it's best in those cases, and I know it may be a little uh, premature here, just return some fire. If you see a light lock in and they're not where you know your friendlies are, rope them because that's probably making a mistake. But yeah, be patient. Uh, be really patient on calling to people's hits because you're not being able to track your BBs or even see where they really are based on their light. They could be like hanging out over here with their light this way. You're shooting at the light. They're really off to the side. So yeah, patience, um, patience, patience. Uh, be prepared for a little friendly fire, a little blue on blue, and uh, just be careful on silhouetting people and your light discipline. Charlie Phillips writes, hey, where are the mini reviews? They are really inconsistent. You know, I was thinking more and more about the mini reviews and I'm trying to keep this show, it's, I'm always kind of playing around with the format. I know some of you guys really like them and some of you guys kind of skip past them. I've been watching your watch habits. I actually, YouTube gives you tools to see when people kind of skip forward and when you drop off. But uh, I think we're gonna be moving those mini reviews out of Mondays and into their own little tiny short, like one to two minute video formats that aren't really reviews. See, like being on the gloves the other time. They're products that I'm not gonna go into a full review on, but might be neat talking about, or things that I personally own, I wanna share with you guys because I like so much. Do you like the mini review idea? You like keeping them here in the Mondays video, or are you cool with that favorite things video? Let me know down in the comment section below. Nick Perez writes, hey Jonathan, how can we help further spread the word about S213 and put a stop to it? So yeah, S213, if you guys haven't heard about it, is a imitation gun bill here in the United States. It's being introduced at the federal level. So it is a pretty nasty thing at that level. Uh, it would require guns to be very brightly colored, very similar to the rainbow gun law that was attempted to get passed in California, and a variation did get passed in California on that. Um, on that, I actually, I did help reauthor a petition on the whitehouse.gov site. So myself and a few other people in the industry put up a new version of the petition. I think the original one was just stop the attack on our sport. Uh, while very great in a message, it really didn't convey professionally 
um, what we really are trying to say to make sure that uh, we're getting the attention we need when it gets the enough number of votes. So yeah, I've already done that. I've been helping getting the word out, and yeah, it's really important. Um, although I think in the current climate, the likelihood of it passing is probably less than half, but it doesn't mean we don't need to fight this thing tooth and nail. So yeah, guys, I'll get a link to the petition down there in the description below. Javier Linares writes, hey, can I use 0.25 BBs in my pistol or do they have to be 0.2 BBs? It's my first gas blowback pistol and just started playing airsoft. So yeah, when it comes to BBs, the only time I ever use 0.2s is my chrono test, to be honest with you, because that's kind of the, the standard of chronoing guns is a 0.20 gram BB. Outside of that, when I play, it is 2.5s or 2.8s. In fact, in my pistols, and my AEGs, I'm pretty much running 2.8s across the board, and none of my guns shoot over 400 FPS either. That's like my milsim stuff. I, I just find that that heavier BB tends to cut through brush a little better. It's consistent, and uh, most of my team runs 0.28s as well, so we can swap mags, and we're all running the same weight BB. Now, if your team's running like 0.25s, those are perfectly fine as well, but I would definitely, no matter what you're running, even Tokyo Marui's recommending, and there are guns that shoot like 280 feet per second with a 0.2, to move up to a 0.25. I think it's a great idea you're going to see uh, better accuracy because you're shooting a heavier weight BB and you're probably not going to see that much loss in range either. Rasmus Nielsen writes, hello John, smelly face. Rasmus is from Denmark here. I see that you're a fan of the CZ P09 as myself, but I can't seem to find a holster that will fit it. What holster do you use and why are people not wearing their pistols on the chest of their play carrier? Love from Denmark. You know, it's funny you mention that because I just got my holster in for my P09 right here. Now, um, I got the drop leg as well. This is a Phobos holster. It fits the P07 and the P09. And these things in US prices are right around 30 bucks. So very, very affordable. I went ahead. I like mine to run a little lower because I run a belt and a lot of stuff on my belt as well as a plate carrier that sits a little bit lower because I carry a lot of gear for my big ops. So I did have the, the drop leg thing going, but you can run a little higher on your belt if you want to. Uh, also to answer the second part of your question, why people aren't running their guns on their plate carrier like this or somewhere else, um, it does take up a lot of real estate. Uh, it can get in the way when you're trying to shoulder your rifle if it's a larger frame pistol like the P09 here, which it's a much bigger frame pistol, which I like. I love that. It's a really good size. But with that in the way, if you're trying to shoulder, sometimes you can do that. You see a lot of guys wear their pistol across their chest if they're doing vehicle operations, especially guys in the military. So you're sitting in your vehicle, your pistol's here so you can get to it and you can actually take care of problems in your vehicle. Whether it's on your leg, it's gonna be really hard, you're gonna be fumbling around over here or down here to try to get it out. Or if you're doing a drop leg situation like I like to run, it can be a real pain to sit in a vehicle because you sit down and like the pistol's twist in your leg and it's a pain in the tail. So yeah, for me, like the drop leg, uh, like the Phobos holster. Actually, it's really nice for uh, as affordable as it is. But yeah, when it comes to that whole uh, chest thing, it's really a personal preference thing. I mean, definitely run it if you want to run it on your play carrier like here. That's cool too. Um, I've seen a lot of guys do that and install it onto the Molly. But uh, mostly here, for me, it gets in the way of like shouldering and maneuvering in with my weapon on the field. Raymond Sue writes, hey Jonathan, I'm wondering if an angled sight is useful in an airsoft world because if you don't hold the gun really straight, the hop-up unit will make the BB curve to the side. So yeah, that's absolutely right. You're talking about a uh, situation with the way airsoft works. So in your pistol, rifle, whatever, you're looking at a situation where there's a hop-up bucking, a little piece of rubber that's pressing down on the top of your BB as the BB goes through it, puts that back spin on the BB and it flies straight. Unfortunately, it's putting a very directional spin, so it's spinning this way. But if you twist your pistol or rifle with like an angle sight for that example, when you go sideways like this at a 45, it now spins it off to the side. So yes, it will absolutely put a curve on your BB. And that's why you really don't see iron sights at a 45 degree cant in airsoft used very much. Now I have used that when I'm actually playing. If I need to get a shot, I've noticed there's a little bit of wind or whatever, and I'm trying to compensate. Sometimes I will twist to get that curve on purpose. That's actually an advantage there. Um, also, if I'm trying to maybe, they're close to the end of my range, I'm trying to get around that edge and I see a shoulder, I'll do that to try to maybe hook that corner a little bit, uh, kind of like that movie, what was it, a Shooter or something like that, I think with, um, oh man, what was the guy's name, and Angelina Jolie, somebody will let me know what that is, where they, they curve the bullets, but anyway, yeah, I do that, uh, but as for the angle, uh, like the 45 degree sights, I probably wouldn't do it, I and mean, if you want the look, and you want to kind of make it look cool, put it on there, but it really will cause a problem for you if you're going to be shooting your gun and using those 45 degree sights. All right, guys, that's it for questions this week. So it's time for my video recommendation of the week, and this one is not even airsoft related at all. And I'm sure if you guys have been following pop culture or been on the web at all in the past week, short of that whole blue, black, 
gold white dress thing, you've seen this. And this is the Power Rangers, like kind of a, um, a bootleg type video. This guy, this, uh, Ani, what's his name? Uh, Adi Sankar, I think. I'm probably totally slaughtering his name. But he did the show, if you guys uh, remember a while back, Dirty Laundry, which was a kind of a reboot of The Punisher, just to kind of show it in a different, grittier way. And this one is the same with Power Rangers. So what happened with Power Rangers, if it was pushed forward and kind of looked at in a more realistic way. Sorry, it's James Vanderbeek and Kitty Sackhoff of Battlestar Galactica fame. So yeah, it's really cool, definitely worth the watch. It is rated R, so be mindful, lots of profanity, blood, and that kind of good stuff. So just uh, definitely not safe for work. But if you guys want something incredibly cool before they probably take it down, check out this video. I'll have a link to it down in the description below. Well guys, that's it for this episode of Mondays. And remember, I wanna hear what you guys think about leaving the mini reviews in the show or breaking those back out into that favorite things type video so they're really small and you guys can watch them on your own speed or bundling them into this one. Also, if you want to get your question on the show, remember it's really easy. All you do is just put it in the comment section below, vote up your favorites and the highest vote ones and good questions will end up on the next week's show. So guys, get them in. Don't forget, put your questions. I'm always trying to answer them for you, but until next time, Get out, play some airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.